when a human dies, tissues and organs die. When tissue and organs die, cells die. When cells die, organelles within the cell die. For example, the lysosomes may be seen to combine with things within the cell to digest substances within the cell by virtue of releasing lysosomal enzymes. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum classically becomes very, very activated in cell injury, death, apoptosis, necrosis as well. Mitochondria swell. They take water just like the cell takes water. This is one of the first changes noted many years ago at the electron microscopic level. And when the uh, cell is eaten up, it's not just the flesh of the cell, but the bones or the cytoskeleton is also digested. The thin filaments are broken down, the actin, the myosin, the microtubules, keratin, desmin, vimentin, neurofilaments, glial filaments, everything associated anyway with the structural skeleton of the cell eventually uh, digests, hydrolyzed uh, by virtue of uh, apoptotic changes if it's part of normal cell replacement or necrosis if it's a pathologic process. Things can accumulate within cells as well and the classification of these is the entire classification of biochemistry. Lipids, carbohydrates, proteins. Because fat washes out in the histology process using H&E, lipids are usually seen as empty spaces, whether they're round cellular structures or whether they're little slit-like uh, structures uh, like you see with cholesterol. Any proteinaceous accumulation within a cell or a tissue can probably be called hyalin. And don't ever get confused when you hear the term hyalin because the differential diagnosis of hyalin is everything. It could be necrosis, it could be fibrin, it could be amyloid. There's a whole bunch of things. Any abnormal protein that accumulates histologically can be called hyalin. Glycogen can accumulate Normally, it would probably accumulate in the areas which normally store glycogen, like liver and muscle. Pigments can also accumulate within cells. And if the pigments are normally things found in the body, like hemosiderin, melanin, bile, or lipofuxin, they are called exogenous. If they are pigments that are found outside of the body, like uh, soot, anthracotic pigment, tattoos, they are called uh, exogenous. I'm sorry, I goofed up. Exogenous are things like tattoos and anthracosis. Endogenous are the four classical things like hemosiderin, melanin, lipofuxin, and bile. Calcium also accumulates within dead and dying and injured cells and can actually uh, form crystals as well, which has a characteristic appearance. The lipid law says all lipids are yellow grossly, no matter what kind they are, cholesterol, whatever, and in histologic processing or microscopically they're washed out because the xylene dissolves the lipids. Here's a fatty liver. Uh, all you could say from here is that it looks a little bit yellower than normal. Here you could recognize it as a liver. Microscopically this area might be seen as a whole bunch of washed out spaces because that's where the fat was. And I bet if you had a guess as to what percentage of this liver was fat, you'd probably say, oh, maybe 40, 50 percent, because half of this cross-sectional area looks like it's uh, washed out adipose tissue. Here's another type of uh, lipid called cholesterol. Cholesterol frequently is stored as these little clefts or needle-like spaces, often in the uh, plaque of uh, arteries, and these are called cholesterol clefts. Sometimes they could be uh, foamy accumulations within macrophages, and they're called foamy macrophages. Pigments can be exogenous, such as uh, tattoo, anthracosis, or they could be normal or indigenous, endogenous uh, to uh, an area. 
hemosiderin, melanin, lipofuxin, bile. Remember those. They all look the same. They're golden brown. They're refractile. And there are always a bunch of stains you could use. You know, how about if we uh, edit this uh, to find out exactly what they are? Here is a pigment picked up by the macrophages in the dermis. It's very, very densely black. This is tattoo pigment. And even though it looks just a little bit stippled here, this could result as very, very dark appearing skin. Here is anthracotic pigment taken up by the lungs. And because they are the richest in the area where the lymphatics are the richest, or subplurally, you could see them picked up in the subplural lymphatics here. They always look the blackest on the outside. Once you cut through this lung, it may not be quite so black. Here is a golden brown pigment. Uh, and if it's an area where there's been hemorrhage, it is most likely to be hemosiderin. You can do a Prussian blue stain, which will turn this substance extremely blue to prove that it's hemosiderin. It's very specific. Sometimes melanin or lipofuction and bile can look this way as well, but they might be normally in places where you would see uh, melanin or bile or lipofuction. If you suspect this pigment is melanin, for example, you can do a melanin stain or an HMB45 stain or S100 stain. Um, calcification is classically divided into dystrophic and metastatic. Dystrophic calcification refers to calcification within an area, usually the result of uh, injured or inflamed or abnormal tissue. But all of the influences that cause it to calcify are local. And sometimes it's uh, often seen as with fibrosis or long-term damage as well. On the other hand, metastatic calcification is not the same as metastatic disease. Metastatic calcification is calcification within tissues due to hypercalcemia, perhaps due to hyperparathyroidism. Or perhaps uh, metastatic disease can also cause hypercalcemia. But if that hypercalcemia results in calcifications in various places, then it's also called metastatic calcification. Last but not least, I want to say a couple words about why cells die, and it's pretty much the same as why people die. Cells die because it's their time to die, just like people. And uh, there's always been a theory that maybe if we do things and we don't wear and tear tissues as much, we'll live longer. Well, that's pretty much bull. Uh, there's really not much you could do to prolong your life except do the usual healthy things. Uh, so on a cellular level, uh, program theory of cell death uh, is pretty much the mainstream versus the wear and tear theory. And I want to say one more thing because I have a minute left to make up for something I forgot to tell you and I feel quite embarrassed. When we talk about the necrosis brothers, we failed to mention the most popular common necrosis of all, and that's called coagulative necrosis. So consider this like a little addendum to my boo-boo. Uh, in coagulative necrosis, you fail to see the outlines of cells microscopically, and you usually see it in solid organs, such as kidney, heart, spleen. And uh, when you look at these microscopically, you might be able to recognize the tissue. For example, you might think this is a glomerulus because it is, but you don't see any uh, nuclei. You don't see any boundaries between cells. It looks like a very, very lousy histologic preparation. And here on this side, we have a uh, splenic coagulative necrosis. So uh, I would have been remiss if I didn't mention that to you. And I want to tell you that we have completely finished chapter one now. So if you're taking what we call general pathology, you have just finished 10% uh, of your course, and I thank you very much.